Hey people, good afternoon. How's it going? Happy Friday. Hope it's still going well for you. And I want to take a video to talk about the trade value of high draft picks. I've made videos like this before, but this is a little bit different because in the time I've been making videos, the Seahawks have never had a pick that's going to be as high as Denver's first. So we need to uh, talk about exactly what it is we're sitting on here and what it could be worth. In the coming months leading up to the draft, there's going to be a lot of conversations about what the Seahawks should do with their top pick. It could land at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't really think it can get any lower than 5 pretty much no matter what happens. But it's going to be somewhere in that top 5. And a lot of people are going to be talking about well, what do we do with it. Should we use it on this player? Should we use it on that player? Should we draft this guy? One thing that's also going to be talked about a lot is should we trade down? Meaning, do we trade from our pick? Let's say we're picking at three. And let's say it gets to our pick at three and everyone we really liked is gone. Or maybe there are three guys still left that we still would be happy taking. Then maybe we say, okay, let's trade down two spots and see what's up. And when we trade down, we can pick up extra picks later th th in that draft and in future drafts. So I want to take this video to kind of get an idea of what the value of that top pick is going to be. Just so we can get an idea of how many more picks we could get. So what is our top pick worth? It depends on who you ask. There are two models that people like to use to estimate draft pick value. There is the classic model invented by Jimmy Johnson, the Jimmy Johnson chart, which has been used for several decades when determining relative draft value. And there is an updated model developed by, I believe it's a Rich Hill of Pat's Pulpit, who believes that he has constructed a chart that is more accurate to what teams view as accurate draft pick value today. So in this video, we're going to take a look at both. This is the Jimmy Johnson chart. As you can see, he assigns every pick a value from 1 point or 1.4 to 3,000. And he says our top pick would be worth, if it sits at number three, as it currently does, 2,200 points. The Rich Hill model, on the other hand, assigns every pick a value from three points to 1,000 points. And our pick is worth 514 points. So there's a pretty big difference between the two charts. Obviously, both picks are really high value, but what is the difference in these models? So let's start with the Jimmy Johnson model. So 2,200 points of value. So let's say for the sake of argument, we called up the Detroit Lions and said, hey, we want to trade down to number seven. All right. We're going to trade down to number seven with the Detroit Lions. According to this chart, they would have to make up 700 points of value. 700 points. So how would they do that? Well, they've got another first round pick all the way down here at number 18, worth 900 points. And if Detroit really wants to move up, they might be willing to say, okay, we'll give you our two first round picks if you give us your number three pick, number three overall pick. Now, they might want something a little bit back in return. And if you take a look at the other picks that Seattle has, they have a pick worth about 200 points, which is the difference in the middle of the third round. Now, it really depends on who is instigating the trade talks. If Detroit is the team that really wants to move up, maybe they'd say, okay, we'll give you our two firsts, you give us your number three overall, and you give us our fo your fourth, because they need to entice us. But if Seattle is the team that really wants to move down, then maybe we need to offer our third round pick to entice Detroit. But it's going to be roughly in that area according to this chart, right? So basically, you trade down nine, um, you trade down four spots from three to seven. You gain a middle first round pick in the process, and you give up, let's call it a fourth round pick. Maybe you even throw in your fifth or something as a little bit of a decorative item. I don't know, but it would be roughly that according to this chart. Let's try to do the same trade over here on the Rich Hill chart. A little bit different. I mean, if you take a look at the way this chart is scaled, it's completely different. 
The first pick is way more valuable than the second pick. The second pick is way more valuable than the third pick. But the third pick is basically identical in value to the fourth pick. Values drop off a cliff after the first two picks. So actually, the Seattle pick going down to uh, Detroit's pick at number seven, that's only a difference of about, uh, excuse me, uh, 90 points, 88 points to be precise. 88 points. So if you want to make that trade, Detroit is not going to give up their other first round pick, which is worth 287 points. That's way too much. Detroit probably wouldn't even be wanting to give up their second round pick. That's worth 118 points. Again, way too much. You might be looking at a trade where like you trade down those four spots and Detroit gives you their third round pick worth 55 points. And if they had a fourth round pick, maybe they would give up something like that. They don't actually have a fourth round pick. But if they did, it would probably be something more akin to that. So in this chart, that third pick looks like it's worth a lot less. So that's the difference between the two charts as a rough estimate. Um, another way to look at draft value, another way to look at this would be future draft picks. And I've said this before, but the rule of thumb is that teams typically look at future draft picks kind of like they lose a round of value for every year you push the pick out. So for instance, let's say the Detroit Lions wanted to trade, let's say they wanted to trade up and they were using this chart and they said, okay, we'll give you our, um, we'll, we want to trade up four spots that's 700 points of a difference between their seventh pick and our third pick. So how do they make up the 700 points? Maybe they go, we'll give you our first round pick next year. And we'll also throw in maybe our third round pick this year to make up the outstanding difference. Because Detroit, they're, we don't know where they're going to pick in the future, right? They could pick... 33rd, they could pick 64th, they could pick anywhere in the middle. You don't know where that future first is going to be. So you would probably estimate it to be about as much value as a middle second round pick this year because it loses one round of value for every year you push it out. So a 2024 first is worth a, as much as a 2023 second. So you could estimate its value to be about 420 points, which is where Green Bay's second round pick is right now. And Detroit's third round pick is worth 185. Now, maybe the value of that second round pick goes up a little bit because Detroit, I don't know if you would expect them to be a very good team next year. I'd say probably not very likely. So maybe you estimate that pick is a little more valuable. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you say, hey, Detroit's having a good year this year. We have no reason to believe that pick is going to be massively valuable. So maybe they're saying, we want your future first and your current second rounder, which is worth 410 points. So that's about, I don't know, 800 points worth, and maybe that's what Detroit has to do in order to make the deal happen. Again, it depends on who is interested. Now, <clears throat> if you apply that same logic to over here, where you have a four-round, uh, a, a four-pick swap from three to seven being worth about 88 points, you can see that a middle first-round pick, a middle... A future first rounder, which is supposedly worth about a mid second rounder in the current year, is worth a decent amount more than the 88. So you might be only able to get a, you might only be able to get that future first, and that's if Detroit is kind of desperate. So you can see that on this chart, the Rich Hill chart, our pick is worth a lot less than it is on the Jimmy Johnson chart. So the question is, what chart do teams use? I think the answer is it depends on how much the player is coveted at the time. And this is where things get hard. We can talk about the Jimmy Johnson chart. We can talk about the Rich Hill chart all we want to. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to which teams value the player that they want at that spot. So let's take a look at some recent examples of blockbuster trades that happened within the top three of the draft. Both examples involve the 49ers. So let's take a look at the Trey Lance pick first. Um, San Francisco traded up from 12 to 3 
and in return sent two future firsts and a future third. 2022 first, 2023 first, and a 2022 third. So let's take a look at the Jimmy Johnson chart first. So the number three overall pick, which is what San Fran got, is worth 2200 What they got in, ex what the bear, excuse me, the Dolphins got in exchange, the number 12 pick, which is worth 1200 a future first round pick, which is estimated to be worth about 420 points, a two years future first rounder, which loses another round of value because it's two years out, so estimated 190 points, and then the future third, which becomes a fourth round pick because it's a year out, so estimated 70 points. You put that all together, and the Dolphins' trade haul for the number three overall was worth 1,880. So it was actually still about 300 points short of the pick that they gave up. So according to the Jimmy Johnson chart, the Niners actually won that trade in terms of pure value. Now, if you look at the Rich Hill one, on the other hand, you can see the number three pick is worth 514. The number 12 pick is worth 347. So did the future picks that the Dolphins got make up for that deficit? Well, let's see. 121, future first. The future future first worth about 56. And the future third is worth about 30. Add all those numbers together, you get 554, which is more than the 514. So according to the Rich Hill chart, the Dolphins won the trade by about uh, 40 points. So, significant difference in how those charts perceive value. So, to recap, the Jimmy Johnson chart says the trade was slanted towards the Niners. The Rich Hill chart says the trade was slanted towards the Dolphins. Big part of this is how you perceive the value of future picks. Not knowing where the pick is going to be and knowing it's going to be a year out, I believe really does kill the value of these picks. I know some people have argued against that philosophy, saying a pick is a pick. But I don't think that's how GMs look at things, especially GMs who know they might get fired if things don't go well. Okay, so that's the first trade I wanted to look at. I want to take a look at the other top three trade that the Niners have been a part of recently. This one's become rather infamous. This is the Mitch Trubisky trade. The 49ers trade down from number two. They get the number three from the Bears on top of a third rounder, a fourth rounder, and a future third rounder. So let's take a look at the different charts here. <coughs> so, again, the number two pick from the Niners, worth 2,600 points. They trade down one spot and lose 400 points of value. So they make it up by getting a second, a, excuse me, a third round pick that was 67th overall. We knew that at the time of the trade because it was the current draft. So 255 points. Number 111 overall, which is worth 72 points, according to the Jimmy Johnson chart. And the future third, which is worth about a fourth round pick, which would be estimated to be worth about 70 points. So 2,220 2, plus 255 plus 72 plus 70 equals 2,597. So basically, the trades, according to Jimmy Johnson, were almost exactly even. They're saying that 2,600 on one side, 2,600 on the other side, or three points less than 2,600. So basically, Jimmy Johnson would tell you the trade was almost exactly even. The Rich Hill model, what do they say? 717 points for the number two pick. Number three pick is worth about 200 points less, 514. In order to make up that deficit, the Niners get 67, worth 75 points, 111, which is worth 31 points, and the future third, which is worth about 30 points. You add that all up, you get 650 points. Meaning, according to the Rich Hill chart, the Bears won the trade big time. Now, obviously, the Bears got Mitch Trubisky out of the deal, so they didn't win anything. But this is just talking about draft pick value. Let me clarify that before I get a bunch of comments from people who say, oh, the Bears couldn't win the trade because they got... Yeah, I know. 
I, that's understood. But in terms of pure value, the Jimmy Johnson tr chart says the Bears and Niners trade was basically even. And the Rich Hill chart says the Bears won the trade big time because there's a big difference between the value of the second and third pick in this chart. So those are the two big trades that have happened in the top three in recent years. And as you can see, the charts get things reasonably close, but there is a significant difference in the way teams perceive value and the way the charts dictate value. And the only real way I can put it is it just depends on the players. You need a top player that a team really covets. Let's uh, take a look at the draft in its current state. The Colts need a quarterback in the worst way. If Seattle is there at number three and C.J. Stroud is on the board and Seattle doesn't want C.J. Stroud, maybe they're happy with Geno, the Colts say, hey, we want to trade up. We want to trade up two spots, get C.J. Stroud. Got to make up 500 points. Colts might say, okay, we'll give you our second round pick, which is worth 540 points, and maybe they sweeten the deal because they really want C.J. Stroud. Maybe they also say, hey, have our fourth round pick worth over, worth, excuse me, exactly 100 points. How about that? That would be a pretty big win for the Seahawks if they really don't value Stroud that much. They would be trading behind the Cardinals. The Cardinals might take somebody they want, of course, but that's the risk you take. So you pick up an extra second rounder. So you have three second rounders at this point, And you pick up the additional fourth rounder as well. That may happen. But let's say you're trading down with a team that doesn't want a quarterback. Like, let's say you're trading down with... Let's say Atlanta really likes Desmond Ritter. And I know they probably don't. But let's say Atlanta doesn't want C.J. Stroud. Let's say that they aren't desperate to move up. Let's say they're okay with their spot. They might go, okay, we're going to move down three spots and make up 600 points. Now nah, you're going to take our second round pick and be okay with it. 530 points. That's going to have to do. So we're not going to make up the rest of that deficit because we don't want to trade up that badly. And if Seattle wants to trade down that badly, they might take that trade just because they really want to trade down. And that's not even accounting for the Rich Hill model, where look at the difference in pick value here. It's only about 70 points. So Atlanta might actually at that point say, hey, third rounder, take it or leave it. That's actually pretty equivalent on the Rich Hill chart. So it ultimately just comes down to how much a team covets a pick. But as you can see, these charts are close. These charts are doing their best. And you can get some idea of the value of a pick based off using these charts and certain assumptions about the value of future draft picks. So at the end of the day, you're going to get close using a chart like this most of the time. But... There needs to be a lot of understanding of how much a certain player is being valued by the team trying to move up. How desperate are they? How motivated are they to move up? What will they give up extra on top of the expected value because they want the player that badly? All right, let me know what you guys think. That's my best breakdown of relative draft pick value. See you guys later. Go Hawks.